Hi, I'm here today with Eric Frankel. Eric is the CEO of AdGreets. Eric, welcome to My Company Story. Don, thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. Thanks, Eric. Eric, can you tell our audience who is AdGreets? What do you guys do? I know earlier we were talking, you're reinventing advertising. What does that mean? What do you guys do? Well, historically, since you know the first ad, which was probably a cave drawing 6,000 years ago, um, nearly all advertising has been generic and one size fits all. For example, a popular retailer telling you and me about their big sale where we can save 40% on items like these, and then they show you and me a dress or high heels or pocketbooks or women's jewelry, and they don't um, tell us the location of their store. So that's an irrelevant ad that weakens the relationship between you and me um, or between you and the brand. So in turn, if we spoke to you about an, a, you know, a nice button down shirt and me about my t-shirt and reminded me that the store is a half mile or a mile away, um, obviously that's a much more compelling message. So that's what we do for hundreds of brands all around the world. Um, we replace things that look like letters, things that look like print ads in one video for every recipient with hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, and even millions of these smart ads and messages. Eric, that's fantastic. So you really have reinvented advertising where I'm walking down the street and I'm not interested in, in purses and high heels, but I am interested in a nice button down shirt. I walk by Brooks Brothers. You're going to show me Brooks Brothers. Here it is on sale today. Walk in on the second door on the left and I go in. That kind of advertising? No, it's more like the kind of digital advertising that's going on in, 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 in the world today, but most brands have just taken the same advertising they used to do on NBC or ABC or CBS and moved it onto digital, where in the world of digital, you have the ability to literally speak to every person or every similar group of people with a message that's relevant to them. So instead of that one commercial, we're able with technology to pull it apart and make a hundred thousand versions, uh, you know, that are that are relevant to that individual. So rather than them wanting to poke their eyes out, they say this is interesting, compelling. They watch it till the end, and then when the brand maybe says click to start shopping the Brooks Brothers sale, people click and end up purchasing that shirt that you're wearing. Got it. I see, Eric. So that is something. So I will see that when I'm on a website or where I'm searching for Googling something or where will I see those ads pop up in my experience? Right. So today we deploy to 22 channels. So popular channels include email. So rather than the emails that you and I get that look more like a print ad, right. um, ours would be a hyper relevant personalized video. We do this on Facebook. We do this on Instagram. We do this on YouTube. We do this on what's called Google Display Network. We do it on Snapchat, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. We can do it on outdoor billboards. We do it at point of purchase in stores where it tells you to text for a personalized video. And when you text and click a button, we're able to identify who you are. You've opted in and said, yes, I would like this personal message. And then we're literally able to say, Don, thanks for reaching out you know, on this Tuesday afternoon in Los Angeles and or whatever uh, we think is the relevant message for you. Wow, Eric, that's fantastic. What a great, what a great way to advertise now. Now tell the audience, tell us if you can, how did you end up in the, where you are right now? Tell us a little bit about your journey and how you ended up doing this kind of work for, the, for your agency. Yeah, so after getting out of, uh, out of college, I got hired by an entertainment company by the name of Warner Brothers where I worked for the next 28 years. And I worked my way up to president where I ran a multi-billion dollar uh, division. And I always believed that it's important for every company and every executive to reinvent what they do or else you, know, you can run into bad times. So one of the things that I spent a great deal of time uh, reinventing was television. And I came up with the idea that you and me after a hard day of work 
or a weekend should be able to press a button and watch whatever we want. So I went out to all of my clients who were the chairman of the major cable and satellite firms and networks and said, hey guys, the future of television isn't only being able to tune into CBS or NBC or HBO tonight at eight, nine, 10 or 11 o'clock, Don and Eric eventually, even though we may not know it yet, want to press a button and watch whatever we want, whenever we want. Sometimes there'll be ads, sometimes there won't be ads, and we may pay more to not have ads. And every client said, are you crazy? That'll never happen. No one would ever press a button and dictate what they watch when they watch. Who would do that when you could tune into all these channels we have? But because we were very muscular and we were the largest producer of television programs, movies, and had the world's largest library, we kept at it for about 13 years mm. and would go back every three, four, six months and say, do you get it yet? And by the way, they would say no. And I'd say that I guess you really don't get the fact that people are going to do it on phones and computers, of which they would say, not in our lifetime. That will never happen. And then, of course, one day, one of the clients apologized and said, we get it now. We want in. We'd like to buy $150 million worth of programming. Another, another, another. And Netflix came along and did it probably better than anyone. Television was changed. After that success and a very long um, and, and successful career at Warner Brothers, I said, what's the next thing that needs to be reinvented? And I decided it was advertising. Why didn't movie ads tell you and me where the movie's playing? I never understood what a New York Metro or Southern California Metro Chevy BMW or Audi dealer was. I knew what Santa Monica Audi was or Santa Monica Beverly Hills. And I just thought there was too much data to talk to you and me about dresses or for my local supermarket to tell me about products that I had never bought and that I, my family wasn't interested in when every time we shopped, we would swipe a loyalty card and they knew everything that we did like. Right. Um, so you shifted, so you should, so based on the experience with Warner Brothers, then you took that over to the advertising world and created that the really lots, lots of little movies, but for advertising and for brands then, and that's what you're doing right now. And how long have you been in this advertising world now, as opposed to the, the uh, Warner Brothers world? I did the Warner Brothers world for 28 years. Um, and today is 10 years and one day into um, my second life as a technologist. That's and, what happened, and what happened, Don, is I got a lot of you know, um, good feedback on this idea. And in turn, my partners that joined me on this journey were the former chairman of the Walt Disney Company and wow. the former chairman of 20th Century Fox and the former chairman of HBO and the former chairman of CBS and, uh, and a large group of other really smart, skilled, experienced people who realized that the old you know, method wasn't working and there needed to be a better you know, mousetrap. So Eric, let me let me ask you then if you can look in. So based on your past and what you've done the last ten years, certainly the past twenty years before that, where is the future going, and where do you see your industry and this advertising industry moving as a rapid pace? Where will we be? What will we be talking about in five years or ten years from now? Yeah. Well, you know the interesting thing about what we do today, which I consider good news, um, is eighty-five percent of the senior marketing executives predict that this is the future of advertising, but only about 1% do it. Oh my God. So I'm out there doing that same missionary work that I did when I was trying to convince everyone that television was about pressing a button and watching whatever we want. So my take is that over the next five years, we're going to see this become very, very popular. We're going to see brands start to welcome customers. Let's pretend you go to a website and you sign up and say, I'd like to get information from you rather than them sending you something that looks like an ad from right. people seen 20 years ago, you're going to get a, a video from somebody saying, Don, on behalf of everybody at, we want to thank you for signing up and they're going to remind you why it's great. You know, uh, what would probably be good for you and ask you to start shopping now and save 20% when you buy that shirt. 
you'll get a thank you when you lease or buy your car, but it won't look like a letter from 1964 or a print ad from 1986. It'll be relevant and smart and brands will have to work harder to maintain relationships you know, with customers. So Eric, are you finding the same struggles that you did at Warner Brothers in the early days of talking about pushing a button and watching a video you want? Are you finding the same kind of issues now when you're talking about advertising the way it's going to go with your customers saying, I don't think so, I don't get it. I mean, are, 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 you, are you that much ahead of the curve that you, people are like not quite catching up or you're, where, where's that with, where are you meshing with your audience? So we had a lot of that. We had a lot of that. And the good news is we've gone from a get away from me kid, even though I'm not a kid, you know, you're bothering me to a, ooh, that sounds very interesting. Um, Procter & Gamble said this morning, can we meet with you tomorrow? And the answer is, well, of course we want to meet with you. You're Procter & Gamble. I can't meet with you tomorrow because A, I want to build a custom presentation because this is all about personalization. Right. And B, I already have eight presentations because tomorrow, because so many other people have raised their hands. Um, so the answer is what usually happens is, you know, for any kind of a new product, it's, ooh, why would I want to do that? Into, ooh, that sounds interesting. Can you tell me more? You know, then into adoption. Right. Um, and then everybody forgets that there was a time when we didn't do it. And we all remember it, you know, as, as always being the popular, um, the popular mode. But yes, we have new brands signing up every, every week. Um, and we have probably 40% of the strangers that we write to saying, yes, I'd like to know more, which as you know, in the cold calling world, you know, numbers of six, you know, percentages of success are usually like in the 2%. Oh, so it, 2% sudden, would be a good number. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, exactly. So all of a sudden 37% or 40% of people are saying, sure, I'd like to know more. Um, right. Let's set up a meeting. You know, those are really, um, those are really significant numbers and, uh, and, and make me feel like not going home and crying into my pillow. Well, Eric, is it safe to say that you're practicing what you preach and that's why your numbers are so high because you're making personalized messages out there to those individuals asking, uh, giving your story, but they're not just the boilerplate, you know, dear sir, hello kind of thing. Sure. Well, I mean, obviously anyone in business um, gets lots of cold pitches and I would say that ours are better. And they're better because, you know, like anything in life, uh, 10 years later, you get better at something. Right. Um, we, we literally, and anyone who's listening to this, you know, we never keep anything the same. You know, we're the crazy company that more or less looks at everything we do under a microscope every day or three and say, what's a better way to do this? And then, of course, we've even gotten really good at the people who say, oh, no, I'm not interested or this or that. You know, there's even that response that says, remember when you said that to Facebook and remember when you said that to e-commerce and remember there was a time I remember when no one would advertise on cable television and now my children don't know the difference between c cable television and broadcast television. Um, you know, so old bad habits die very, very slowly, you learn. Yes, yes. And it's hard to turn around the Titanic, not that these are the Titanic, but it takes a very innovative, um, risk-averse executive to raise their hand and try something new. It sure does. And, and Eric, that leads me to my next question, really geared to the audience of this show, which are other business owners and CEOs in a variety of industries who have gone through many struggles. Some have only been in business for a few years. Some, like us, have been in for decades. What challenges in your past ha come to mind that you have had and how have you overcome those challenges? Well, I mean, I think, you know, when I think about this business and or any new business, you know, it really comes down to is your idea good enough that it should exist? And then do you have the wherewithal um, and power to stay in business to let your idea exist? And um, so I can't sit here and judge everyone who may be paying attention to this call, whether their ideas are good or bad. The real hard part is that everything takes longer than you think it's going to take to happen. Um, 
And um, so the question is, how do you survive? How do you pay your rent? How do you pay the 65 bills that come in? How do you pay your team? How do you give people raises? How do you buy people new computers? And you know, how do you stay alive uh, long enough for uh, you know, the world uh, to embrace what you're out there doing. And I'd say, you know, that's the biggest challenge in the entire, you know, world of business. You may have a wonderful idea, but you may run out of money. Before. Right. Money, money, money is the great equalizer, isn't it? And having a long enough runway that you can live on whatever you have in the bank while you'd get your plane up and off the ground is what I've heard many times explained to me. Correct. Because, yep. you know, look at whether it's a restaurant or whatever, you know, you know, there's just a huge a failure rate. It doesn't mean the restaurant wasn't good. It just means that they haven't found, you know, their financial model, you know, right. yet. Um, now, Eric, what about uh, specifically in the uh, agency business, which you're in, uh, advertising agency, the, are, there, are there unique challenges that you have found in running an agency that are unique to that as opposed to your other life when you were running uh, uh, with Warner Brothers? Well, first of all, so we like to consider ourselves more of what we call an ad tech, martech platform okay. rather than an agency. We do lots of creative work here, but we don't think that's the long-term goal either. We think that eventually the brands will understand what we do. They'll ask their agencies to think about ads in the future where there are many, 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 many versions. What we're experts are, are taking all those little variables, ingesting them in a proprietary platform, figuring out who's the right person to give what message to, and pushing them out on these 22 channels in every kind of format. And then while the ads play, we, we optimize them. But yes, Warner Brothers, you know, a job like that was kind of fat cat living compared um, right. You know, um, to this. Uh, my yeah, I, division. I, I, yeah, I would imagine you can address to the audience the, the, the life you had working for a large corporation with lots of people, you know, running around at your beck and call and doing what you need to do. All of a sudden now putting on the hat where, you know, hey, boss, the, uh, the plumbing is out in the bathroom. Uh, you know, you got to get, get there and clean it up. I mean, tell me about that transition. Don, Don I never wondered where the toilet paper came from. <laughs> When I was at Warner Brothers, now when I either myself or or someone has to uh, go to Amazon.com or up the block to Smart and Final, I sit here and sometimes I scratch my head and go, "Is this what I signed up for?" <laughs> right. I, that my Saturday is buying, you know, paper plates and forks and and all that. Um, it's a great equalizer. It's kind of freeing on one hand. Um, it's it's a, just a really interesting challenge to no longer, you know, be a prima donna um, and to make it on your, you know, make it on your own. I mean, I wasn't the person who pulled the trigger and made the movie Harry Potter. I was the person who figured out how to monetize it after the fact. And we were very, very successful. Now it's, you know, sink or swim on myself and my terrific team's um, skill set. Um, and, 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 and muscle and what have you. So what's the most exciting part about now being an entrepreneur with a small team and running your own operation like you are, as opposed to the other life you had? I mean, other than taking off for three days last week for the first time in two years and going skiing, um, um, you know, what's, what's is, is, is seeing benchmark, you know, is having a number of clients who work with us 365 days a year, having that, having that 37 and a half, 40% of people um, say, yes, I'd like to know more, even if they're then still slow to sign on the dotted line. Um, I think probably the thing that's the most exciting is a competitor of ours. Um, since I last spoke to you, um, a major private equity firm went out and wrote them a really big fat check. Ah. Uh, and we think we're better than they are. And they just sold, we don't know exactly how much, but call it 80% of their company for $233 million. Wow, that uh, puts you in a pretty good uh, room then, doesn't it? Well, it does if there's a second person or if that person wants to put two pieces together. But the point is, you know, if that poster in back of you um, is by, you know, artist ABC, 
and no one's really purchasing it. All of a sudden, if one day someone says, that's a great painting, I want to pay you know, a million dollars for it, and you have 20 other paintings by that same artist, you know, then it's, it's good news because finally there's a valuation put against this business. It wakes the world up. And frequently, who would have invested in a company like that would be a lot of strategic entities. And Amazon might invest, a Walmart might invest, a top ad agency holding company, right. an SAP, a Salesforce, an Oracle. But instead of one of those, who might want all of those capabilities in their toolkit, um, what we had here is someone who said, I'm going to buy this thing for $233 because I believe there's going to be a buyer for a billion or three billion down right. the line. Right. So that makes us even more optimistic. Maybe there's light at the end um, you know, of, this, of this road or tunnel, so to speak. That's wonderful, Eric. Eric, uh, uh, what are any other final words that you'd like to pass along to business owners? Then, any any anything that you're that you'd like to say to someone who may be listening right now that's like you or me, running a company, running a small business. Any words of advice? You know, I mean, I think it's 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 the old cliches. The harder I work, the luckier I get. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. I mean, I've always been a hard worker and this isn't about me, it's about the entire team and all these terrific um, uh, colleagues that I have. But it's not unusual to start talking to Europe at 6 a.m. And you know, tonight in Los Angeles, I have a call with a company in India at 10.30 at night. And then I have Volkswagen Germany at midnight when it'll be 9 a.m. there. So there is, you know, something to be said about, you know, hard work, sweat, perseverance. Right. Uh, it, it, it's going to take hard work no matter what you choose to do. It's yeah, gonna I think work. it's very unusual to be that really lucky duck. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I, luck, luck, a lot has gone before luck, it seems. Exactly. Yeah. Luck comes from, from working 70 hours a week. That's right. Happens. And then you make your own luck. Eric, if anyone wanted to get a hold of you, what's the best way to do that? How should people reach out to you? Oh, you can just reach out to me. You can go to adgreets.com, which is the first time we put our little sign in back of us here. Um, uh, and then there's an info button and we respond to every single person, usually within an hour or three, you know, of waking hours. Or you can just write to me at Eric, E-R-I-C, at adgreets.com. And I, you know, we respond to everyone, you know, many are polite you know, as a, as a sales guy, I know the importance of getting response. They say the second best answer is a no versus a yes. Um, and, you know, what you don't want to do is just be reaching out to people and never hearing back. So we'll politely, you know, tell people, thanks for your note. You know, nothing that we could do at this point in time. But yeah, feel free to reach out. And if we can give anybody any advice, uh, we're happy to. We mentor people all the time. Fantastic. Eric, thanks so much for coming on the show. I think you've made a wonderful episode here and I wish you the best of luck. We look forward to, to maybe interviewing you in another five years and see where you are there. Don, we, we hope we're alive and well and healthy and, uh, and, and available to speak to you then. And we wish you best of luck with your series. Great. Thanks so much, Eric. Good talking okay. to you. Thank All you, right. Don. Bye, Bye, Bye now. Hey, thanks for listening to My Company Story. We have new episodes coming out every week, so please subscribe if you like this. And if you'd like to hear previous episodes, you can go to mycompanystory.com or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Also, if you or someone you know would be interested in coming on the show, please email me at don at Thanks for listening.